you have injuries throughout the season, so um, building continuity throughout the group is a good thing of guys you know, seeing things or communicating things or doing things a little differently um, than doing it with different guys in front of them. And then lastly, um, competition is a good thing. So. Looked like Jermaine got some reps at guard. I'm just curious, did, it, did you see that correctly? Uh, did he, get, he, he didn't get any reps? Okay. Yeah. I mean, he gets reps in a lot of spots, but you know, Not he's working hard. Yeah, yeah we move yeah. everybody around. So. Yeah. Carmen, there is some continuity this year with the offensive line. It feels like the starting unit, for the most part, um, comes back. How much of a um, benefit is that? I think, like we said back in the spring, the, the benefit of having the guys back is that we have uh, ex an understanding of what the expectations are as a group and the process, which, you know, having awareness of what's going to happen can, you know, obviously help alleviate some problems or. Or, or get over the hump on some certain things. So we definitely enjoy having, you know, you know, a lot of the guys back in the room and the guys we've added, you know, you know fit our mold and we're excited about. How much have we've seen a lot of fair uh, uh, getting starting reps at right tackle? I don't know what the depth chart looks like this time of year, but you know. I mean, like we talked about before, there's a bunch of different combinations of guys getting reps at different spots, different groups. I, I don't, we don't say starters, we don't say anything. I mean, it, it's just, it is what it is. You know, whoever's out there, I mean, I know at some point I know it's important for you guys, but truly for us, it's about getting better and guys getting work with different guys. And that's, that is a goal of ours to, to get that because that's the nature of the position and the nature of the season. How much have you seen Thayer mature from year one to year two? I think like anything, I mean, you know, you, you like to see that you know, improvement in that regard, um, just by sheer nature. Um, he's a worker, um, like the other guys in the room. You know, he and Dylan both going into their second year. But then just the, the, the improvement that you've seen with, you know, guys from the spring to now, you know, just having, you know, the two rookies that we have in the room of, of their improvement as well. So, I mean, that's one of my core philosophies as far as, you know, your goal should be constant improvement. Um, I know as a coach, I'm always trying to get myself better, whatever it may be. And I think you expect that as yourself, especially at our position, just because the nature of the position is such a developed Mental one, you know, it, you never have it. You know, um, the skill set and the, and, the, and the things that are required to do the position well um, are not natural. So you've got to really work at them and develop them, and it's never, it's never done. Coach, and talking about formulating the best five, obviously it's a mix and match. But what do you look for in the best five? Well, I think by nature, there certain positions have certain traits. You know, tackle to guard, guard to center. Um, but nevertheless, for us, the core philosophy of all of them are still the same: of being smart, being tough. Um, being committed to their craft, um, being able to adapt. We do a lot of things, and your expectation is to do all those things well. Um, so, um, and then of course there's a communication element to it. Um, certain positions have to uh, give more calls. Certain positions have to maybe give more alerts. You know, so pre-snap, you know, somebody being making a call, and then, you know, as as we're getting into the as the defense is kind of declaring what they're going to do, then a different group has to. You know, maybe make a call, so there's definitely some communication that, that, that you look for and require in that regard. I just want to get your thoughts on the tight end unit. Obviously, the last time we spoke, we talked about Michael Mayer in line blocking. Um, you brought in Jacob Hollister now, and then obviously O.J. Howard versus Leach. Can you talk about you know the tight end room and, and what that looks like going into the first preseason game? Yeah, really excited about those guys. Um, uh, it's, it's been a really good room. I feel like the spring was really beneficial to everybody. Like I said, we, back then we had um, basically four out of six guys that were new, kind of learning the system, terminology, all that kind of stuff. Um, they've done a nice job in the spring, which has helped them get off to a good start in training camp. So guys are working really hard. They're getting a lot of reps. They're splitting them up pretty good. They're all getting pretty good opportunity to go in there and show what they can do. Um, they've digested the material good. And now they're going out there and executing their stuff. Uh, Jacob's been a great addition as well. He's got some familiarity to this. Uh, to this system being with us last year so it's good to get him back as well he fits right in and so far impressed with, uh, with what they've been doing and looking forward to see what they do against a new opponent this week and then obviously going into the first preseason game coach McDaniels talks about fundamentals and technique and the little things right and that kind of make uh, a player make a team roster. What, what have you seen from the tight end group in terms of grasping the defense, or the defensive scheme as well as the offensive scheme, but just learning the fundamentals at the point of the time? Yeah, they've done a nice job. Of that. I think it's been my experience that when you're when you're putting in some new schemes or you're going against a different opponent, or for example, when you just put the pads on and now you're contacting physically, you get excited about some things and you can lose some of your fundamentals and, and techniques. And so they've done a good job of really focusing on that. Uh, it's never going to be perfect. That's why there's training camp. That's why 
other practice, uh, practice. Mm -hmm. but they've done good with you know their hand placement, getting off the ball, finishing stuff, and I'm pretty happy with where how far they've come so far. And Michael Mayer, I know he's a guy that everyone's talking about, obviously making plays and, and team drills. But um, what have you seen from him that really thinks that he could take that next step, even for a rookie? Yeah, I, I think really with him, we're just trying to keep it in the moment, um, and we put a lot on his plate as we have with all these guys. And so you know whether it's different personnel groupings or different positions within those personnel groupings. Um, you know, he just handled it. Every day is probably a new learning experience for him, mm -hmm. either with a technique or an assignment or something like that. And um, he's done a good job of staying in the moment and doing really good with what we've given him. And then when we add more to his plate, then he's taking that on too. So he's done a nice job. And just watching him in practice, he seems to be a little bit mature. Is that some than, than a rookie? Is that something that you've seen from him? Yeah. Um, like he's picking up things a little bit faster than a normal rookie would? Um, he's done a nice job. I think both of the rookies we have being, um, you know, uh, John Samuel Shanker and him done a really good job of uh, picking everything up pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, we, we have the benefit of having the extra rookie meetings with those guys and going through that with them helps so we can spend a little bit of extra time with them and they've taken advantage of those and, and both of those guys, um, they've handled it really good. All right, well, thank you so much, Coach. I yeah, you bet. It. Good seeing you. You too, my guy. Just talk about uh, the veteran presence of Austin Hooper into the tight end room as well. Yeah, uh, Hoop's been really good. Um, as I was just mentioning, I think the spring for him was was big. It was a big, uh, even though he's been a vet in this league, I would say learning our system, our terminology, the way we're asking him to run some routes and do some different things was certainly a little bit of a new learning experience for him. Um, that has been beneficial. He's come back uh, really ready to go. I feel like he has a lot more confidence. Um, he's, he's definitely a great guy to have in the room. He speaks up. Um, he has good little tidbits here and there from his past experience to help some of the younger guys. And he's done really, really good so far. Got a couple of returning guys, but it looks very vastly different as to who will get a lot of reps this season. You know, can you just talk about the differences between last year's and this year's tight end room and how things are going? Yeah, um, it's certainly new uh, to a degree. There's a couple guys returning, and now that we got Jacob back, so we do have some guys with some familiarity. Jesper and Cole are back, and then a lot of the other guys were new, and so it's definitely different from last year in terms of, although last year was a little bit of, they were still learning a new system too, um, just the makeup of the room is different, and so, you know, we'll see what it looks like. Right now, we're giving them all as many reps as we can in different scenarios and in different routes and different settings and, and they've all taken taken it and run with it so far and, and uh, probably these next you know this next week going up against a different team will be the next step to that process. Obviously you know it was uh, Josh McDaniels you know Dave Ziegler decision to bring him in draft him but when you have a guy like Michael Mayer slide to the second round a guy that was consensus number one tight end you know in the draft class you know how excited are you to be able to have him to fall to that spot and get him? Yeah we're excited about any new addition certainly someone like Mike uh, mature kid uh, he's tough he's smart um, and he works really hard and it's really important to him so anytime you get a guy with those kind of credentials you're really excited about been really fun to work with he's, he's He's not shy about putting in the effort. He always wants more information. He studies hard at what he's got, and he's trying to make the best of it. So it's been really fun. You said they all have their strengths. What, what are some strengths you see from Aiden? Maybe some things that you maybe surprised you. Yeah. No, I mean, I just keep it I keep it as a whole with the whole group. You know, we've got our physical strengths and our mental strengths and just the ability to keep going out and stringing together positive plays and, you know, coming back off the field and learning from anything that, you know, came up in practice. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Just from watching Jimmy Garoppolo kind of operate, what are some things about him, just not only as a player but as a person, that you feel like the team will gravitate towards? Yeah, Jimmy's a Jimmy's a great person, great leader, hard worker, as the rest of my quarterbacks are. So it's very pleasing to come in every single day and um, you know just get them prepared and they prepare on their own and they go out on the field, execute, and then we come back in and see the practice and we go from there. We keep moving in a, in a positive direction.
Obviously, no NFL season is the same as another. You know, there's always constant change, especially within your quarterback room. How different is it coaching, you know, outside of Chase, you know, a bunch of different quarterbacks than what you had last season? Uh, nothing much. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I just treat every offseason. You start from scratch and you build up your, your foundation and you continue to go through the summer and as we are now in training camp and just continuing to pr improve the group. You know, what are some things that you were able to see on tape, you know, at Purdue that you guys really like that's also been able to translate over here? Yeah, Aiden has a lot of uh, physical tools we were we were um, excited about to work with, and mentally he's he's a hard worker, you know, and he retains information really well and asks great questions as all the quarterbacks do in the room, and so that's just a, you know positive thing to work with. Ryan Hoyer, obviously the veteran presence in the in the room. You know, what does he provide not only just on the field but in the classroom of you know being able to have everybody operate on the same page? Yeah, he's he's great to recall things from the past, um, from his experiences, and also he you know like he's good. He's been great on the field, on and off the field, and in the meetings. And he's he's really good. Like all of them are. They all do ask really good questions, and their performance on the field and in the meeting room has been positive. Even though it is a, a new quarterback room, you have two quarterbacks in Jimmy and Brian who are familiar with McDaniel's in that system. So how beneficial has that been in the you know in the relearning process for you in the room? It's been great. Like I said, they they have they have recall and they have experience. And the best part about it is they're looking to get better every single day, and that's what I respect, and that's what I, that's my job. Obviously, I'm not sure how much you know Jimmy will be playing, but when you look at Aiden, when you look at Brian, you know with these preseason snaps coming up, what are you going to be looking forward to more? What are you going to be looking forward the most in seeing their game? Really, I mean, we're just worried about just at practice each day. We haven't really even kind of gone into that that mode of, of game time, game, who's this, what reps, or anything like that. I'm more concerned about tomorrow's practice and getting better from there. You know, taking vertical shots, you know, stretch the field, you know, not only horizontally, but also um, vertically as well, and just putting pressure on the defense. And then what type of skill players do you need to have that offense? Obviously, speed is one, but then what else do you need from the wide receiver position to kind of understand, to kind of make those big plays. I think, you know, you just need guys, and this is, it's not just for that offense, but you want guys that are, you know, good route runners, good ball skills, um, gonna go, you know, play the ball in this year, be able to track it, you know, and, and we got a lot of guys that, that fit, um, you know, fit that mold and, and, you know, can do those types of things. And Jimmy Garoppolo, obviously, um, he was brought in here for a reason, being the franchise quarterback, but um, what would you describe his game if you were, if someone to ask you, hey, you know, what does Jimmy Garoppolo bring to the table? How would you describe this game if you were describing it? You know, um, I think Jimmy's the type of guy that, you know, really can do it all. You know, I mean, you see him make all different types of throws, um, outstanding leadership, um, you know, just the type of guy that people, that player guys want to play with. You know, people want to play with and want to compete with and, you know, go out and, you know, go compete against, you know, in this league um, alongside. All right, thank you so much, Coach. You guys, you know, within your receiver room, you have a few guys that excel in the slot position, whether it's Devontae, Hunter, Jacoby. As a you know, offensive kind of mind, is it challenging at all trying to figure out how to make all those parts work when we have some guys that have some overlap? No, I think, you know, when you look at it, um, I've always felt like, you know, the, the, the more – Good players you have, the better, you know. And when you got guys that can also, you know, do things like you said, play inside and outside, you know, you allow to move guys around. And um, we got a good group, you know, of receivers as well as you know backs and tight ends that, you know, can can do some different things and, um, you know, it gives you a little flexibility in that regard. It seems like Devontae, Hunter, and Jacoby in particular have kind of worked out their chemistry pretty quickly. How, how have you seen those guys mesh together? So, you know, I'm just impressed with, um, you know, them along with others, but just the way that they, you know, they work and they're all professionals, you know, and just to come in on a day-to-day -day basis and, you know, they'll, you know, maybe work on something that they want to get better at or they want to get better at with the with the group of quarterbacks and um, and it's just to see it play itself out, you know, in meetings and then to practice and, um, you know, they're all very competitive uh, and then even, you know, even the, the other the other guys that, you know, the other guys on, on the receiver roster, so... 
it's just a good group, and, and they're very serious about competing and, and wanting to win and, and do it the right way, you know, as a team. And Garoppolo obviously getting out there in training camp for the first time, coming off his injury. Um, he knows, obviously, McDaniel's system very well, but what, what's the importance of him figuring out, you know, the timing and getting a feel for his receivers and the pass catchers overall? Yeah, I think just, you know, the more reps you can have, the better. Um, you know, I know the guys like him being out there um, just because he's a great presence, but as well as, you know, a very good player. Uh, you know, that's what this training camp is for, is for, you know, to throw to your teammates and and um, and that, you know, that's been good. I think it's been good and it's going to continue. we got a lot of work to do before we go play.